Welcome back to our special edition of the show coming to you from Davos in Switzerland. We've been talking with Pakistan's Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Gilani about key issues affecting his country. Here's more of that discussion. Prime Minister India accused Pakistan of uh, having a role in the gunman attacks on, in Mumbai last November, um, something I know your government has strongly denied. But how will you handle the second dossier of evidence if that's, uh, when that's you know, presented by India later this month? Yes, we received a dossier uh, that was on 5th of January. Uh, and uh, we have uh, I've referred it to the Ministry of Interior. They are investigating. And the moment will come up with results, we'll share it with the whole world. And in terms of uh, the relations, I mean, India's asked uh, Pakistan to, to be much more, much more resolute in taking care of this and resolving the issues of the attacks. How effective do you, do you feel that cooperation I is? I think uh, uh, we have a resolve and we have a will. And we, we are certainly, according to the Security Council's resolutions, whatever the resolutions were, we have already implemented. We have already banned uh, uh, lashkar e taiba and... Uh, we have arrested a few of the leaders of jamaat e dawa and, uh, and the suspects have been arrested and we are investigating. And we are very serious and uh, we would never ever allow our Pakistani soil to be used for terrorism. I wonder then if, you know, if there is evidence of uh, Pakistani culpability that, or at least uh, you know, perpetrators of Pakistani origin, are you willing to work with India to, to see justice done? Uh, in fact, uh, when this incident uh, took place, I rang up Dr. Manmohan Singh, I condoled, and I offered my full cooperation for even intelligence cooperation if they need. Now, I, I spoke with India's uh, Minister for External Affairs, Pranab Mukherjee, and he said that any future talks on the, uh, the issue of Kashmir would be very much depending on, dependent on uh, Pakistan uh, dealing with these attacks in Mumbai and, and any potential role, uh, that these talks would be postponed until then. Now, in, I wonder... It's, it's uh, on the pause. And uh, I think uh, there is a tremendous pressure of the public on the government of India, and they are also in the middle of the elections. Therefore, their uh, demand is justified. And uh, we, on our part, we assure uh, India and the people of India and the people of Mumbai that uh, we are against terrorism and we are all already the victim of terrorism. And our own great leader, Benazir Bhutto, she has been assassinated because of terrorism, and therefore we uh, share uh, the values uh, and uh, share the same uh, sorrows uh, with them. And uh, we are sorry for the brief family. And uh, I assure the people of India that uh, in the investigation, if anybody found guilty, and the law will take its own course. It's very sad. It's very unfortunate that uh, there's such tension now between India and Pakistan. When it seemed there was some movement forward, the two countries' cooperation seemed to have increased. It seems like a cycle where it's, it's one step forward and sometimes two steps back. And I wonder, how can you insulate the relationship between the two countries from this cycle of... Uh, of we, as that? I have mentioned, that uh, we are uh, having excellent relations with Afghanistan, and so we were improving our relations with India. But with this incident, uh, who is the beneficiary? You can very well understand is a terrorist. They are the beneficiary out of all this uh, uh, incident of Mumbai. So how do you see uh, Indo-Pak relations moving forward? It will take some time now. Mm -hmm. We uh, were moving towards uh, uh, confidence building measures and uh, creating a lot of goodwill and atmosphere between the, both the countries. Uh, but uh, now uh, things will take little time. When, when the, uh, the, these kind of incidents go down to the grassroots level and it generates a, a you know, bad feeling between the people at grassroots level, what sort of grassroots diplomacy could take place? I mean, in the past, there's been the bus shuttles between the countries. There's been you know, uh, arts and culture. Cricket, uh, cricket uh, diplomacy. Cricket, course, now yeah. uh, civil society from Pakistan, they, with the human rights uh, activists, they, had, uh, they, uh, they visited uh, India. They met a uh, lot of their friends and even the younger lot uh, in, uh, abroad in the United States and in, in uh, UK, they are doing their best. And uh, we are grateful to uh, most of our friends in the world. Uh, they played an extremely important role in diffu diffusing the situation, the tension between Pakistan and India. In, in, in this time of security concerns, how hard is it for you to focus on the, the pressing economic concerns? You have issues such as the uh, uh, rising food costs, power cuts, the you know, global downturn has affected the country, the investment rating has, has gone down. How, how are you able to find solutions for those in, in this fact, time? In uh, fact, earlier when uh, the, there was a, a pri uh, the hike of oil prices and the commodities gone up, uh, we uh, were very strict uh, with the... Uh, with our disciplines, monetary discipline, and uh, we had tightened up ropes 
and we withdrew our subsidies and uh, we put the economy on the right track and we diversified our economy and we shifted to agriculture. This time we had a bumper rice crop and uh, at the same time uh, with a new uh, recession uh, all over the country, we were uh, now we have under the IMF uh, shadow and the uh, IMF program and uh, on the very first uh, th uh, three, three months uh, performance, we have done excellent. You it's it's uh, in the moving in the um, uh, upward trend. We had an email that came in from uh, a viewer by the name of Jalal Balala, who says, does Pakistan pride itself in possessing nuclear weapons while its economy is in shambles and there is not even electricity at its factories? Uh, in fact, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is not uh, that reality. Yes, we are, uh, uh, there is a shortage of electricity in Pakistan and we are, take, uh, we are uh, moving in on a war, war footing and we have uh, already had uh, agreements done uh, on the Barrage, uh, on Barrage Mountains uh, power, power plants and uh, we have already signed a lot of contracts and uh, we had other windmill uh, and uh, nuclear and solar uh, program and uh, we, have, we are coming in a big way and uh, we, there are a lot of invest, in, investors coming uh, for uh, these our lucrative policies and our good policies for power side and we'll be soon be able, by the end of this year, we'll be controlling the situation. I wonder with, with again, the security issue and some of the, the economic issues at, uh, at hand, uh, how easy it is for you to, um, to attract foreign investment, because that's been a concern of Pakistan for some time now. This is the concern of the world also, because sure. they need a stable Pakistan. And it is in the interest of the world that we are uh, fighting terrorism for the peace, prosperity, and progress of the whole world. And we, are, we have a group of friends of Pakistan, they are all seriously thinking on helping Pakistans economically. And uh, I assure you, we are moving in the right direction. Apart from all challenges, we are, t uh, we are turning them into opportunities. Now, you, for a lot of people, Pakistan's in a transition phase in the post-Musharraf era, uh, finding stability with a new president, a new prime minister, relatively new prime minister as well. Um, what is being done to, to assure the, the, the public that this post-Musharraf era is what they, a lot of them were asking for, some kind of democratic rule, some kind of governance that would lead them forward? Certainly you can't compare Musharraf's era with this era because it's a totally democratic government and after 18th February last year, the elections, uh, the people have voted for pro-democratic forces and uh, progressive forces in the country and we have formed a coalition government in the center and, the, and in all the four provinces and uh, we have uh, uh, the president elected with two-third majority and the prime minister unanimously elected uh, and uh, we, we have uh, stable provincial governments and therefore we do not, don't have to compare it with Musharraf uh, because he was elected by referendum which is not part of the constitution. Some people are nostalgic for that era though. I mean, are Pakistanis better off now? Certainly, yes. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank you. And that's it for our conversation with Pakistan's Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Gilani. On the next show, we speak with Queen Noor of Jordan on the state of Middle East peace 10 years after the death of her husband, King Hussein. From me and the team, we'll see you next time.